welcome to the topological sorting module. In this module, we're going to learn what exactly we mean by topological sort and try to run it by an example. So first of all, the prerequisite for doing topological sort is a directed acyclic graph. What we mean by a directed acyclic graph is one, it should be a directed graph, which in this case, we can see directed edges. So we can say that this is a directed graph. Second, it has to be a graph. And thirdly, it has to be acyclic. What we mean by acyclic is that it should not have a cycle running with all edges running on the same side or on the same orientation. Here, we can see that there is some sort of cycle forming between A, B, E, and D. But all the arrows are not in the same direction, which means it's not a cycle. You can see that from E to B, there is an arrow. And from E to D, there is an arrow. So this does not make it cyclic. This graph, we can safely say, is a D, A, G. What we mean by topological sort is that if there exists a directed edge between x to y, a directed edge going from x to y, then x should come before y in my topological sort. A better way of understanding this is consider all these vertices in this graph as subjects. Suppose E is one subject, B is another subject, A is some third subject. Now, when you do subjects in university, you have certain prerequisites. Suppose A is advanced algorithms, B is, say, basic C programming. Now, you need to do B before doing A because you need some sort of programming to be understanding advanced algorithms. So this directed acyclic graph here is telling me that B is a prerequisite for doing A. So when I try to decide in which order I want to do my courses, I would have to play place B before A. No matter what else is in between, B should always be before A. This is exactly what topological sort means. If there is a directed edge from B to A, then B will come before A no matter what, no matter what is the positioning of the other vertices in the topological sort. Let's intuitively try to make a topological sort out of this graph. Now, <coughs> I know that C has a prerequisite D, D has a prerequisite E, but E does not seem to have any prerequisites. So I can do E first. Then when I'm done with E, I have two options. I can do B or I can do D, because B also has one prerequisite which I've completed. D also has one prerequisite which I've also completed. Suppose I choose to do D, then I choose to do B. Now, when I'm done with D and B, I'm done with the prerequisites for A. So I can do A. And then I can do C, because C has one prerequisite, that's D. And we already did, did D before. Another possible topological sort could be first E. Then I choose to do D. After I've done D, I jump directly to C because C only had one prerequisite and I have completed that. After that, I choose to do B and in the end, I choose to do A. So as you can see, one graph can have many possible topological sorts. Let's try to figure out how we can find this computationally. The first algorithm that we're going to look at has something to do with something that we've already learned before called DFS which is a depth first search. What we do in a depth first search is that we look at a current vertex, we print it, and then we recursively call the DFS algorithm on all of its children, which have not been explored till now. In this case, let's see how we will get the output for DFS. Suppose I start my DFS at vertex E. So I first get E, then I recur for its children, Suppose I first recur for B. So I go to B. Then I recur for its children and I print A. After going to A, I have no further children here. So I backtrack, come back to B. Backtrack, come back to E. Now recur for its other child, which is D. So I go to D. I print D. Then I go to <coughs> its children, which is say A which has already been explored, so I don't need to do this. 
then I come back I go to C then since C has no further children I come back and I backtrack back to the root which is E what I'm doing here is I'm printing the parent before all of its children if you carefully notice, in case of topological sort, I have to do the exact opposite. I need to be printing all the children before I print the parent. So if I make a simple change in the DFS algorithm, I can actually get a topological sort. Instead of printing the parent first, I should print all the children first and then print the parent. So in DFS, we print and then we recur for all the children. In case of topological sort, we are going to recur for all the children and then print the parent. Let's see how we will do this using this particular graph. So let's say I start with E. So I'm here at E. I know that I have unexplored children, so I must recur first. Suppose I recur to B. After I record to B, <coughs> I see that I still have children of B, so I go to A. Now when I reach A, I have no further children to explore, so I put A in my stack. Then I record to A, which is a child of B. When I reach A, I see that there are no further children, so I can print A safely. But this is not the order in which I need to print. This is actually the backward order that I'm looking at. So I will push A into a stack that I maintain. Once I'm done with A, I backtrack, I come back to B. Now I have no further children of B which I need to explore. That means I have completed all the prerequisites for B. So I can put B in the stack here. Then I backtrack and come back to E. E still has unexplored children which is D. So I know that I still haven't completed all the prerequisites for E. So I go to D here, then I see that D also has children, A has already been explored, so I don't need to explore it further, I go to C. Now when I go to C, I see that C has no further children, that means all the prerequisites for C are done till now, so I push C on the stack, backtrack from C and I come back to D. When I come back to D, I know that all the children have been explored, so I put D on the stack and then I come back to E and now I know all the children of E have been explored that means all the prerequisites for E have been completed so I push E on the stack. When I'm back to the root I know that I am completed traversing my entire graph and I can pop from the stack and get my topological sort which will be E, D, C, B and A which is exactly what I had here. Now this is just one possibility of a topological sort and you can find many more by maybe starting doing the DFS from a different vertex. You can validate this topological sort by looking at the graph and seeing that suppose if I have course A, the prerequisites for course A were B and D and B and D have both been covered before it. Similarly, you can check for all other 